Good evening, everyone. It's 6 p.m. I'd like to call to order the Narragansett Town Council meeting for April 9th. This is our first of our three budget meetings this week. And with that, I'd like to ask the town manager to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who are watching from home, the work sessions is an opportunity for the council to view the manager's budget for the fiscal year uh, 25. It's prepared with all the senior management team along with, uh, obviously, our finance director, Christine Wilson. And this is the result of that, and here is your opportunity to view it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And one last announcement. I neglected like to say that the council president is away. She's in Washington, D.C., so she regrets she cannot be here. So with that, we have human resources to start with. Hello. Hi. Um, my budget actually went down a little because my position is split between the town manager's budget and the human resources budget. Other than that, pretty much everything was status quo and remained the same. So your, your role changed about, about eight months ago to split two duties. Jim, can you want to update us a little bit about how that is going? It's been working excellently, and we're getting quite a bit of service uh, from this uh, combined position, and it's also saving the town money. Great job. Thank you. you. Do any of the council members have questions? It's probably the, the best looking one we'll see tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you, Patty. That's great. <laughs> no. 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 So the, the revised is, is lower than what you had the, act, the actual of last year, or oh, that's because of the splitting? It's because of, mostly because of splitting the position, so it is, is actually it, lower. If it, if it wasn't in there, would it be about the same? Um, if my position wasn't split and was just out of here, it would be additionally near about $40,000. It would be pretty much the same as last year, Steve. Yeah. This is minor adjustments for uh, personnel costs and materials. That would be the, the only increase. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Well, that was easy for you, Pat. Thank you so much. She'll be back. Next up is building inspection. <clears throat> Hello, Wayne. And before you start, I'd like to recognize all the hard work you've been doing, working with all of our zoning changes. You and community development have certainly right. been putting in your extra time, and we all appreciate it. Thank you. So I will start with the uh, building department. Uh, the operating budget pretty much remains status quo. There were some minor adjustments, but uh, no big increases. Um, we do have one position in there for a uh, full-time zoning and plans examiner position, uh, which is budgeted the result of a lot of the bulk zoning changes that took place. Um, and just the amount of work of permits and stuff that are coming through the office. Um, I'll go to, uh, for our capital, we have two items in capital. We have a, a vehicle replacement for a vehicle that no longer passed registration, so we do, we have budgeted for a new replacement for that. That's predominantly used by our rental inspectors um, and also an electronic plan review station uh, we received one through a grant from the State Building Code Commission. This is a second so that uh, both Troy and myself will be able to do electronic plan reviews and uh, expedite the, the process and the amount of time it takes to get uh, plans reviewed and approved. Um, I'll, if you have any questions on the building inspection portion, and then I'll move on to rental registration. Any questions from the council? I just have one suggestion. <laughs> Um, and that is uh, for this new vehicle, which is moving, I guess, from a Crown Victoria to a Chevy Equinox. Um, I did do a little research over the weekend, and uh, there is such a thing as a hybrid and or electric Chevy Equinox. Um, it's, it retails at 35000 but I would venture to guess that in this current era, there's probably grant funding out there to reduce that number. 
Um, I know one of the problems we have is that we do not have a charging station in Narragansett. However, it is my understanding that there will be two charging stations at the library, and um, I think it would be possible. I don't know. I didn't notice if the hybrid was um, was a plug-in hybrid or it was a, a battery hybrid. I think it was battery. Um, but it's just something that I think we really should look at. I think it's time and um, availability is greater than it has been for a long time for uh, these vehicles. So I really strongly urge that we look into that when we get to the point where we want to purchase this vehicle. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'd have to look into the charging location. I mean, I think you know the library is convenient for people that are going into the library in short-term charging, but for us, you know, we'd be having to park the vehicle there overnight to charge it overnight. Um, so I think at some point we'd have to get something here at the town hall mm -hmm. to accommodate any type of electric vehicles. I think that would be a great thing to do, but in the meantime, you know, I don't think there's too many people at the library overnight, so you could always use it there, use yeah. the one there. All right, thank you. So one, You're welcome. One, one question. Wayne, the um, building inspection um, position, is that going to just be in the building, or is there anything for enforcement um, in, in well, the I budget, have, and, the and maybe it's in the next Yeah, I'll the, talk the about that in the registration. Or, registration. Or, okay. Yeah. This would specifically be for uh, zoning reviews uh, and also inspections. Yeah. Again, the bulk of it, due to the bulk zoning regulations right. that were put in place, there's a lot more zoning review that's required for every permit that comes through the office. Right. And uh, it certainly has uh, resulted in the backlog of us getting these permits processed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before we proceed? Okay. All right, so I'll move on to rental registration. Uh, again, the operating budget uh, has remained, remained pretty much intact with the exception of we have budgeted for uh, short-term rental revenue uh, as well as short-term rental expenses due to that uh, potential ordinance being passed uh, this year. Um, we also have positions in there uh, to accommodate both uh, rental enforcement and also overseeing the rental registration program in our office. Uh, we, we've always had the regular rental registration, but now with short-term rental on top of that, uh, it's just become a real uh, burden to oversee that along with the building department. So my proposal is to have someone in my department that would oversee regular rental registration, which is the yearly rentals along with short-term rentals, so they can oversee the enforcement section of that, getting violations out, uh, coming to municipal court uh, for hearings. Uh, it's just become a, a lot of work, and we expect that to continue. So we do have a, um, an administrator uh, within our office to, to work for the rental program, on the rental program, and also a full-time enforcement person. Right now we have two part-timers. Uh, they kind of split up the week, it equals one full-timer. Um, but with short-term rentals, we expect uh, an uptick in the amount of enforcement that's going to be required. Is that then similar to the model that Newport is using to have one person oversee the rental registration? It's very department? similar to that, although okay. they have a much more robust staff uh, than, than we would have. I believe they have a half a dozen people just in their rental program mm -hmm. uh, in their, on their staff. Um, so we'll, this is a start, so we may, we'll see how it goes and then make adjustments uh, accordingly as we move forward. Thank so, you. I, I have a question. Um, one of the things that was in the ordinance is the issue of um, significantly more inspections. So, I mean, maybe that was, should have, I should have mentioned that in the previous uh, section, but how, how is that going to be managed? Because it sound, sounds to me like there are inspections that are going to have to, have to happen annually. They, yeah, that's part of that ordinance is annual inspections right. between both uh, building and fire. Mm -hmm. um, for the initial year, we are going to send out an RFP for that service, for a third-party service. Uh, in the future, we may uh, attempt to do that more in-house. Uh, but the initial year, there's, we just don't have the staffing to do it. We okay. definitely have to do third party, uh, as long as as well as third party monitoring. So, uh, is the cost of that in addition to what's in the budget, or is it? 
that included is, that in is included in this budget. Okay. The cost for both of those are RFPs uh -oh. for third party. Oh, contract and, service. That's yes. what that is. Yeah. Okay. So that would be for both things. So we'd have to, I guess, structure the RFP to look for those kinds of, that, that kind of. Uh, yeah, we're working, we're working on, on that, that now okay. with the town manager. We're working on, uh, okay. on those RFPs. And the inspections would be paid for by the landlords themselves, not through the town, correct? So this is well, self-funded fee. Correct. All the yes. expenses of these additional positions uh, would be funded through the, uh, the, the, the short-term mm -hmm. rental uh, ordinance fees that the, we would collect. And that's that total revenue figure that you have, the $573,000? Uh, yeah, I believe that's correct. Correct, so, Chris? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have. To, um, yeah, it sounds like a good <clears throat> a good idea to kind of, um, you know, have someone heading up in within your department, but you know, it's another additional person or two people to try to correlate all that together. Because I know the enforcement is a lot, um, and Chris Angari, I mean, he he does work pretty good on the enforcement, so this will help that whole situation out. Um, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, you can see. You almost need to have to have it at some point, especially yeah. if you get if you want it to, if you want the ordinances to work. You need some people. Absolutely. I mean, you can see by attending the zoning board meetings in the municipal court that we've had a tremendous uptick in uh, enforcement and the amount of time, the appeals, uh, the hearings that take place. It's yeah. uh, it's never ending. Uh, but uh, yeah, you definitely need the staffing in order to do that. No, you're doing good work. You know, a lot of people. Look I always, I always mention that the, the building inspection department is doing a good job with the little that they have. You know, I mean, they are enforcing the four unrelated, three unrelated, the three, the three student. So it is working. People are going to court. Um, you know, yeah. people are defending themselves, and that's fine. But you know, it's it's uh, the town is doing a good job with it. Yeah, and I think Thank it's you. it's good. I mean, as you know, the construction it hasn't let up at all. So I think it's good to separate the two activities within the department so we have better control and proper staff to address both building uh, inspection needs and also rental enforcement uh, needs as well. Thank you. I think the finance director has some comments. Yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody that the rental registration has no taxpayer dollars in it. This is self-funded. Self -funded. Mm -hmm. So if anything, you got to pay, you got to bring in the revenue to support it. Thank you. Chris, on um, uh, uh, line item 50, 124, I just wanted to double check this. It has an actual for this year of 9,888, 9, and then it shows um, for 2025, 47,132 <coughs> with a zero percentage of increase. I was confused. That's the way the system operates. Oh. <laughs> it, it's, it takes it from the zero to the new number, so it, it says it. that's... That's just, just how you just blame it's it on Munis, aren't you? Yeah, I have nothing to do with that column. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't like that column. <laughs> I see. I use that column. That's not good news. <laughs> okay, thank you. Please continue, Lynn. Uh, that's pretty much my presentation on the uh, rental registration budget. Uh, there's no, uh, well, the, the capital that was in there, that vehicle, is for the rental registration program. Uh, so, but other than that, like I said, operating is pretty much. It stayed the same as it did last year. Uh, we'll probably need to get a few extra desks uh, if everything mm -hmm. moves forward as planned. I know you're also talking in one of the zoning meetings we attended um, about body camera as well. Is that yes? Uh, we currently have that in the budget as well. Okay. Uh, we are looking at some uh, less expensive options. Uh, we want to make sure that the features can do what we want it to do, but. Uh, uh, right now, we do plan on having uh, body cameras available for the rental inspectors uh, for for their benefit as well as uh, the, the people mm -hmm. that they are visiting to make sure that there's no issues. Very good. So that's definitely something that they they wanted, and we do plan on implementing that on July 1st. Be helpful for the zoning hearings for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Chris has always asked for any type of uh, video evidence of an interaction or uh, comments made by the tenants when it comes to the enforcement, and this will certainly help. Any other comments from the council? Town manager? No, the, the uh, body cams came up when 
the zoning enforcement people who were running into some situations where people were verbally abusive and threatening. So we'll, when Wayne and I sat down and talked about it, we said, well, it'd be a great opportunity for us to protect the staff and gather evidence for, for prosecution. Absolutely. The fact that there may be some that are less expensive than the, the, the units that the chief uses is... Yeah, because we don't need the, uh, to the extent that the police have with their protocols and their, uh, the, the manner in which they have to maintain all of that evidence, so we don't have that same restriction, so we're able to get a, a less expensive model, but still do the same services. Meet that needs. The, yes. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Good. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wayne. Mr. Holland. Good evening. I do have a brief PowerPoint presentation for you. I'll go through this overly complicated budget. All right. Okay, uh, first thing I just want to thank everybody for your support for the. Um, Renovations the IT office downstairs. Attach a couple of pictures up there. Mm -hmm. Council, town manager, public works, finance, and obviously uh, APCOR did the work. Came out excellent. Mm -hmm. If anybody hasn't seen it yet, feel free to swing by and check it out. Working out very, very well. Thank you. Uh, first part of the budget is the operating side for uh, personnel. Uh, current, currently four positions, one of which is vacant network and security administrator, uh, two admins, for um, Town Hall and Public Safety, myself, and then there's a potential new FTE for a related to GIS specialist uh, included in the budget also. Uh, responsibilities for the uh, IT department, pretty self-explanatory, cybersecurity, hardware, software support, uh, various things like that, hasn't really changed. Um, personnel and benefits set by finance, uh, only change in that is the one FTE for our GIS. Central. Operating side, this is non-software and services uh, for the IT department. This is basically what keeps our department running internally. Uh, most of it's level funded. The only difference is the contracted services for our, our uh, ISP, we want to add a redundant one. Uh, allows us to uh, keep the internet up in the event we lose our current one. Uh, right now we're leaning towards a satellite-based one. In the event we have a hurricane, we can still keep it going. So. <clears throat> uh, next most complicated section is um, line number 50311, which is our core services um, and the big operational software and services um, line item. The, um, this particular section right here is the core software such as Munis, OpenGov, uh, revenue software, which is in transition currently, um, asset management, work orders, and the other large one, email, and the office subscription with Microsoft. Uh, roughly about 200, almost $250,000. Um, we broke it down in another section for cybersecurity. This is related to antivirus, email filtering, firewall support and updates, network monitoring, things like that, uh, all related to cybersecurity running at about 155000 And the other section I referred to as other, um, this addresses some internal systems for IT, for asset and inventory systems, our phone system, both here and at public safety, uh, physical security system, tools for the internal IT department, Zoom account for the town, and the uh, cloud backup for our O365 system at roughly just under 80000 That's our operating as it sits right now. Um, I can go to capital if you want to. If you want to, questions before I go to that. I have a question. Sure. So that <clears throat> that three ten is it or three licensing dues? That's that's all. That's all that is is software that we have to purchase. Software for. licensing. Yep. Subscriptions. Yeah, everything's gone to subscription based. Actually, there is an edit to that right now. Uh, we just got the update to our um, virtual software license. Uh, for servers, and that's gone up $4,700, so that's a, another increase to that. We just got that yesterday. So. 
So a lot of that went up then. A lot of the oh, yeah. Ever, ever since 2020, it's been through the roof. Yeah. Was it like a one or two years? Or are you the, it's different type of contracts as each one? Most of them are uh, one year. We're going to two years. We're not really designed for that for budget purposes. Yeah. Um, this, and the savings isn't all that great yeah. uh, across, across those. Uh, so, yeah, it's usually single year. Some of the extra cybersecurity we have to go into these days. Yes, some of it, a good chunk of it, cybersecurity. Yep, all that went up. <laughs> Dan? Yes. Um, the GIS specialist, could you just explain what that position would be? Um, <coughs> proposed is to work with multiple departments um, to uh, facilitate uh, map edits for like finance, things like that, other departments where we can integrate um, current software packages we have in the cloud with GIS. Uh, things like uh, Viewpoint is designed to work with GIS. Right now it's not. Uh, all you have up there is a Google map. So we could actually integrate that through what's called an API, upgrade, update the software, um, the, I'm sorry, the maps behind that and the data behind that from our own internal Canvas system. Um, that's basically we can do about a half dozen different packages we could do that with now. So we're about to add another one for the utility billing could integrate also. That'll be the bulk of it. And then there's other departments who've, you know, Somewhere along the way, I've requested maps uh, that they want to edit and change on their own, or we have someone do it, like this, this staff member could go in and do it for us. So. And yes, we could actually post those online with some licensing changes. So. Correct. Is, is that for more of a uniform approach to, you know, you know putting everything together and... Correct. Uh, yep. Yes, it's, it's, I thought it was... I know we had the GIS mapping for the, you know, like the... Uh, Zoning department uses it all. Correct, yep. That's, that's all part of, of that? development right now. Well, okay. That would expand upon that. Okay. Yep. But it's so being that free used town-wide besides. Is What's that? That? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, but it's, it's, it's used in other areas of the town to kind of do the same thing, coordinate Correct. everything. Yep. Okay. Yep. So does that Thank free you. up staff and community development? Probably not, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just checking. That's one crazy busy department, so. Okay. Because. Yeah. So even though I'm not supposed to look at the percent change, um, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a pretty high number for, uh, for you know, full-time wages. So that's it because is, of yep. this position? These would be college-educated professionals like the rest of my department. So we're talking minimum 70 yeah. plus. Yeah. And that's on the low end. So. Yeah. yeah. OK. Could, yep. Is it possible that it could be a part-time position? I mean, I don't know if you could find a human being who would do it, but I just... Correct. That's yeah. where you run into is, is you, you'd have to find a retiree or someone who's been no longer... Would have to know GIS. And they'd have to know GIS, yeah. GIS so you can't bring someone right. in who doesn't I know it. it, so unfortunately, yeah. I'd do it yeah. if I understood it, but I don't, so. <laughs> It's an amazing piece of software. It's, oh, I know. I, I, yep. I saw I did a class at the library on this. It's fascinating. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Jim, do you have any comments at all on this? You nodded. You supported as it was submitted. Thank you. So I guess I did have a comment. <laughs> you did. <laughs> You're all set. Yeah, I might as well have a comment Please. too. I want to join the crowd. Uh, that would also our maps would all be updated for the assessor's office. You know, we up, update them every so many years, and we get them up, and they're already outdated. So yes. it would be on, you know, live almost yeah. Yeah. information, not. Helpful in so many ways for mm -hmm. our rental registration yeah. to our tax assessor. Yeah. I know we tried to do something with parks and recreation mm -hmm. or with the taxes, and we, we had a hard time, so this will solve a lot. Yeah. So, so just another thought, since, we, since you said that, Chris. Is there some way to, um, you know, to sort of uh, spread out the cost of this position to the, um, to the other departments that would use it? <laughs> well, IT is one of those departments I, that, that pretty kind much of everything takes, does that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, when it's split across several departments, it usually ends up in the IT department. Oh, I see. Uh, like Lucky our unit licensing is primarily finance, but everybody uses it, so we put that into the IT budget. Okay. So, yeah. so you get to be the uh, the, the catch-all catch guy. Catch yes. all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank uh, you. Next is capital. We just, if you want to go through that. Yes, please. Okay. Um, IT number one is the uh, fiber optic cable maintenance. This is our line item that we keep to repair um, damage to our fiber optic network that runs from the North End Fire Station clear down to uh, Galilee and wastewater treatment plant. So it covers the entire town. Number two is PC and server replacement. 
Uh, we try to keep uh, anywhere 30 to 40,000 in there every year, uh, replace PC servers, um, any other equipment that um, comes up. Uh, also monitors. Now, IT number three is equipment related to IT department that we really can't anticipate, um, rather than going into the red. Uh, voice over IP phone system replacement. This is a, um, adding to a pot of money that we've already got started and building to replace our phone system. Uh, while it does work, the handsets are no longer produced. Uh, anytime we get those, are reused, and um, so it's time to start looking um, the next couple of years. IT number five, uh, we've actually pushed off the FY26. Uh, that's but to replace our physical security system and all the buildings that actually have it. Uh, and IT number six is to update our Nuance software. We purchased Nuance a while back through instead of purchasing Adobe, which is outrageously expensive. Um, and this is less than half the cost, I think 25% of the cost of purchasing Adobe under subscription. So that'll bring us up to some current patch levels. And that's it, actually. So just to clarify for the, uh, we, the phone system, this is $50,000 that's sort of being put aside, and you'll continue to add to that? Correct. We have already have 50000 set aside right now. This will add to that and probably do another year of that to get us up to about one hundred and fifty. Uh, we'll have to make the decision at some point whether we go look at cloud or we go into self-hosted. Cloud is another um, license or subscription, for lack of a better word, which will cost a substantial amount of money every year. So I'm hesitant in going that direction. Okay. Any other questions from council? No. I have one. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Steve, no, please. No, I'm all set. Thank you. you. Said, yeah. I have one that I had asked Jim a while ago if with the change out with the laptops, if there may be a possibility for zoning and planning board members to be able to have a iPad, there's a lot of paperwork that they're given to review on a weekly basis, and it seems like it would be saving a bunch of trees not to have to have them print everything out. Definitely look into that and get a price back. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how many we'd have to get. We'll have to figure it out this week. Yeah. So you can figure that out. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, anything from you? I think we're all set. Thank you. Great. Thank you. When you get rid of those trees, you got rid of those bottles. You're turning into a radical there, Jim. Uh, those are 4,040 just from that oh, machine that's, alone. That's good to <laughs> start today. Good. That's good. The next up, we have special appropriations. We have a <coughs> few people here tonight, so if you'd like to come up, one at a time, and if you'd like to present uh, to us. Do you want to do this in order? Anybody? You, can we, yeah, can you we don't mind me just open, uh, saying a few things on okay. this page, because um, I just didn't have another way to do it. So we have, the first one is perspectives. They actually don't have a request in. It's Meals on Wheels. Perspectives is Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So me, uh, Meals on Wheels put in a request for $1,000. Yep. Um, visiting nurses... Uh, that we didn't get a request, so that 2000 we didn't get a request. Okay, and then further down, 50060, Washington County, whatever that means. I, it's actually um, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they asked for uh, 5000 And um, NRPA, really, um, they only requested 2460 not 2500 so I just wanted to clean that up and uh, let you know of those few changes. I just don't create new accounts if we're not going to fund or before I know for sure, you know. And I believe the document you gave out earlier that South Kingstown oh, is yes. reducing by some as well? Yes, uh, South Kingstown Senior uh, Services, they, they're requesting, ooh, what is it, 81? 81? 87,821. 87,821 from 96,911 for last year. Right. So it's a little bit of a reduction. So, And I gave you the paperwork. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if everyone is here who has sent know. us something in, so if, please, if you would just take your time coming in. Veronica, you're up front if you'd like to come first. Yeah, whichever you like. Whichever one you're more comfortable with. It's a better chair. <laughs> Are you sure this is, is better? Can you hear me? 
Um, so I'm here, I'm the president of the Narrow River Preservation Association, the NRPA that you just talked about. Uh, for a number of years, we've had received special appropriations from, from the town of New Hampshire, and we use them, we've used them every year for our River Watch program, which is, we are now starting in May, our 33rd year of water quality monitoring in Narrow River. We have 13 sites, um, 10 along the main, main stem of the Narrow River, and then the others are outlets, um, inlets coming into this, such as the Metatexas River, the Mumford Brook, um, and a couple of other falls. We also, uh, one of our, this is very good for Nary uh, one of our sites, NR12, was off of the Edgewater neighborhood, and because the town of Narragansett has put in a new detention pond there, this is about five years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, uh, the levels of bacteria there are lower, except during really major rainstorms, and so we've been able to stop using that as one of our sampling sites. So um, I just have to really thank the town of Narragansett has been very good about putting in best management practices, or detention ponds, retention ponds, or whatever, is appropriate for the neighborhood, and that's really made a difference. So the only time we really have problems right now with bacteria levels are uh, really severe uh, uh, rainstorms. Um, so this is our request is for, as you said, 2,460, um, and it, um, our total cost for the River Wash program is, is just under 10,000. Um, and so our costs we use is because Narragansett and the town of South Kingstown and the town of North Kingstown all have, are all within our watershed and have sites that are within there. So we have a request into all three of the towns. Um, and as I said, the program is run by volunteers. So we have um, at each site, we have two volunteers, two teams of volunteers. And they take the samples, take them to the URI Watershed Watch Program. But once a month, those samples, water samples, are taken to the URI Watershed Watch Program, where they are analyzed, and they use EPA standards for quality assurance. But so they analyze the samples for nutrients and bacteria and salinity. And the cost is for that, uh, the in analysis of the water quality measurements. Also, the training of our volunteers that go out there and also for once the samples have been analyzed, they send to us our, um, our results for the year, which then we can use. And in the past, uh, we've used these results. Um, we also we use um, some of these funds to help. We have a, um, a URI graduate that works with us to put the data from each year into a really long-term data set. And we've come and presented before the Narragansett Harbor Commission to show how over this it's now going to be 33 years, um, how our water quality has improved in Narrow River. So it's used for, uh, there's a lot of different reasons why it's, why it's so important to have this. And we really, we have volunteers, but we really need the money to pay for it, the lab work and the training and getting the data to us. So, Thank any you. Questions? Anybody have any questions at all? Thank you. <coughs> Good luck. Have fun working with Jason again in Narrow River. You'll have fun working with your buddy Jason again. Yes, yes. He's Good. And I just have to. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name, my name is Denise Panichis, and I'm the executive director of the Samaritans of Rhode Island. And I have not been here in quite a few years. And I want to say thank you for your continued support. Um, as you know, um, you know what we do since the beginning, but probably the biggest thing we're doing right now is advocating for barriers on the bridges, which I sent the uh, clerk a, uh, and all the council of all the coastal communities a request for a resolution to uh, the House and Senate Finance in support of putting the barriers on uh, the bridges. Um, right now, the way it stands is in May. The way the legislature appropriated the money, um, they're going to do engineering studies of the Jamestown and Mount Hope first. That will come out next, the report will come out next month. And then the next appropriation is for the Pell and the Sakonet, and that report will come out a year from now. 
that's the way they did it. So we don't really have um, much uh, to say about it, but I did talk to your police chief when I came in and we talked about um, input from police, fire. I mean, that's all gonna be part of the process. Um, but this can't go on where we have these bridges unsafe. There isn't a community along the coast that doesn't know people who have passed away, who have died, who have been impacted. And I live in Winsocket, and I can tell you right now, they do not know what you go through uh, for the coastal communities. And so as I've been at the Samaritans for 23 years now. I will not stop fighting for all of, for all of you. Um, the last thing I want to say is um, there are three things we know about the truly suicidal. They are hopeless. They believe that no one cares if they live or die, and in the end, they actually think they're doing everybody a favor. All of the municipal appropriations that you give is suicide prevention, because we know that people know that they care about them, whether it's the Johnny Cake Center, or the Senior Center, whatever you're doing helps people stay connected to their community where people care about them. So I want to thank you for all you for that as well. It really does matter. And I'm here for you in whatever way I can. Anyone wants to reach out, you know where to find me. Thank okay. you, Denise. Does anyone have any questions? And thank you to the manager's staff over the years. They've all been wonderful to us. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank work. you. Okay, thank you. Who would like to volunteer to be next? Good evening. My name is Michelle LePage. I'm the executive director for the Domestic Violence Resource Center. Um, so we've been a staple in um, the Washington um, County community for 46 years now. Um, I'm sure many, all of you are familiar with us. Um, we are asking for $5,000 to help support our drop-in center um, and helpline. Um, all of our services we are the only organization um, in Washington County that serve victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. All of our services are free of charge. Um, and our helpline and drop-in center are really the gateways for services um, for all of the people who call for help with us. Um, we have residential programs that they have to go through our helpline in order to get referrals into our safe home, our confidential safe home, our transitional housing, permanent supportive housing. People also call there directly to become um, involved with our support groups, our counseling services, um, as well as our LEA program, which is we recently um, just hired an individual to work directly with the Narragansett um, Police Department um, as the law enforcement advocate to partner with them, and that person just started this past week. So we will see I think an increase in numbers for Narragansett as far as people we serve. It's very hard to, to um, give an accurate estimate as to how many residents of Narragansett we do have. Right now we're showing about, this past year we served 1,400 people um, and it's at about 7% of people who disclose where they're from, from Narragansett. Um, we believe that that number is higher. Um, and certainly with the new law enforcement advocate position, that number will increase even more um, as we go into next year. So we are really just grateful for anything that Narragansett is able to, to give. Um, so thank you for the consideration. Thank you. Does everyone have any questions for Michelle? Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's probably just not turned on. Did you got to push the button. Got it. So go. before I tell you why I'm here, I'm just going to hand out. Kate was not able to stay tonight, so she no. just asked me to hand out um, her her letter for their ask for Johnny Cake, and um, just thank everyone for their continued support in the past. So I just wanted to thank and my name's Lynn Wagner, and I'm here representing South County Museum and School of the Craft. Um, we just finished getting our last makerspace open, which is our fiber shed. So we're now at the School of the Craft, and we do natural dye workshops in our fiber shed. We do letter pressing in our blacksmithing. We carve spoons in our carpenter barn, and then we have our blacksmithing, too, along with our museum. Our ask is for $8,000 to help support all that we do here. We're 90 years old, 
And I want to thank all of you and the town for your continued support of the museum. And we're really excited to be able to offer these <laughs> great programs. Thank you, Lynn. And we pr proudly hung your oh, decoration right there. Yeah. Thank you so much for that kind That's gift. Right. Thank Does you. anyone have questions no, for Lynn? No, but it's a great place. No. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Good evening, my name is Bill Morissette, I'm the Executive Director of the Wildlife Rehabilitators Association of Rhode Island, um, and I just wanted to come here tonight to uh, introduce myself, I am the newly appointed Executive Director, um, been there since October of last year, and um, I know that the town has been um, supporting our organization, so I did want to go ahead and thank you for um, doing that. Um, our request... Um, uh, this year is slightly more than what um, last year's appropriation was, um, $10,000. Um, uh, relative to um, the Wildlife Rehabilitators Association, we're also known as the Wildlife Clinic of Rhode Island. And so the best way to understand us is kind of we are first a veterinary practice. So we are um, down the road in Saunders Town, and just if you were taking a dog or cat into a uh, veterinary facility with intake and surgery and intensive care and all of that. We have those types of facilities. In addition, we have rehabilitators throughout the state that do rehabilitation of animals um, in their home. Um, a big part of our expense is that we are open 365 days a year, um, and we also have uh, night owl uh, hours. Um, and we have a, a network of volunteers that are transporters. They, um, they work off of a, an app if an animal is um, in distress. Um, they put a call out to our transporter network who will pick up the animal um, uh, normally within an hour and bring that animal for um, care. So it um, is just a very, very significant expense for us to provide um, care to um, these animals. Um, in addition, we have a pretty big public health um, responsibility as well. So we are we run a regular medical record system just as you would see in your normal doctor's office. And so we are doing a lot of testing um, of these animals to um, determine if there are diseases of the president present and all that information is downloaded to DEM so that we can um, keep track of what's happening in the towns relative to disease. Um, I think the biggest, you know, service that we provide to the residents, um, this is the time of year where um, just endless um, run-in today of people coming in with bunnies that the dog or the cat got into the nest and the people are just distraught. There are these baby bunnies and, you know, what do I do? Um, and just the relief of them being able to bring them to our facility and know um, that the animals are going to be cared for. So. Um, a big part of what we do for people is being available um, around the clock and um, uh, taking um, care of these animals. So again, thank you for your past support. Thank you. Are there any questions at all? I have a question. Sure. So um, <clears throat> how do people find out that you're there? Do you work with current veterinarians and all that kind of thing? Or is it, uh, how, how is, what is your outreach like? To, to um, a lot of it is animal control. So normally the first call of a resident that doesn't know about us is to the animal control. Um, in some cases we work with animal control, in some cases they will pick up the animal and bring that animal to us. Um, uh, in other cases they might contact um, DEM who also would um, in most cases refer um, to us. So we are doing a lot of public outreach as well, um, trying to um, uh, get that information out and a lot of it is word of mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Deb Tanner, and I'm with Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. I've been there for 24 years. 22 of those years, I was the executive director. Two years ago, I thought I was going to retire. But I didn't, I am the development director and our executive director is Lindsay Bush. Our uh, request is for $3,500, which is level funded from the previous year. We serve senior citizens, individuals 55 plus years of age who are disabled or 60 or over. You mentioned Meals on Wheels earlier. We are the organization that delivers Meals on Wheels in Narragansett. We receive the meals, our staff and our volunteers, 
at the annex at the Senior Center in South Kingstown, and then we deliver to Narragansett, South Kingstown, and Exeter. Our volunteers deliver in other areas of the county. We serve 13 of the southernmost towns in the state of Rhode Island. We have a budget of about $240,000. We have a staff of three, 385 volunteers, and we provide six to 10 rides to medical appointments every day. We transport folks to grocery stores, uh, personal care appointments like haircuts for personal hygiene, housing appointments, um, if they have to go to the DMV, that kind of thing. We transport in addition to the medical appointments and the grocery stores, which are the biggest ones, uh, things that, that are necessary to support independent aging. We also deliver groceries. Uh, we take orders, we do the online ordering for them on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which actually came about because of the pandemic. We were in uh, Belmont with the Narragansett Lions taking the orders and stuff, and the need was really great for that, so we've continued that. So we take the grocery orders the two days, and then we deliver on Thursday, so that every week the seniors who can't go to the grocery store and don't know how to do the online ordering, we take care of that for them. There are other seniors where um, they can do the ordering, and we just dispatch a volunteer to do the pickup and delivery. Um, so it really kind of is tailored to what a senior wants to do. Some people have the ability to shop for themselves, some people don't, but they need to have that food to support healthy aging. We also have volunteers who are doing companionship visits. Um, the, the commitment they have to make through us is that they're willing to go see someone at least once a week for an hour or so. Um, it helps to alleviate the isolation. The other thing is we'll do um, phone safety checks. And then we also believe so strongly in supporting our seniors because it's like they're the forgotten population. You know, for a couple of years we did really well with donations and stuff during the pandemic because seniors were threatened by COVID. Um, but everything's back to where it was. Like, we don't, we don't pay attention to our seniors in the way we should. We have no transportation infrastructure. Southern Rhode Island Volunteers gets no support from the state of Rhode Island. We get support from the municipalities, wonderful funding sources, donors, that kind of thing, people who live in the community and see those seniors. Um, so that's really important to us and we sincerely appreciate what the, the towns do because that allows us to leverage our applications to like the Rhode Island Foundation and other locations like that to show them what's going on for the senior population. So we appreciate that. And we also sit on the Narragansett South Kingstown Senior Advisory yeah. Committee with Steve. Yeah, it's really good work. I mean, I've been opened up my eyes to the volunteers that are willing to do all this because, you know, we, a lot of the complaints we got on that board was there wasn't enough rides or, you know, I know we use the bus only at a certain time and it's almost like we have someone as a fill-in that maybe can give a ride once in a while and the Meals on Wheels too. So, I mean, they're, they're, it's the hardest thing is just getting the word out, you know, and everybody, because yeah. like you said, everybody kind of just falls back into their right. system. And But um, no, it, 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 I'm glad that it's out there, so and, we do good and work. It, and in all honesty, at 67, I can tell you honestly, if you want me to remember something, you gotta tell me half a dozen times yeah. or more. <laughs> you know, because you put it away, you got a lot of other stuff going on, so. Right. Are there any other questions for Deb? Thank you for all you do. Thank you. I thought it would be a perfect follow-up. Thank you for a great segue. Also work in the elder care services. Um, my name is Jessica Gosselin, and I'm the director of St. Elizabeth Adult Day Centers. As many of you may know, um, we took over the um, the Adult Day Center on Post Road from the town, and actually we are coming up on our three years. So um, I just want to thank you for your support, um, and our request is for the same funding as last year. Um, I can tell you that we've seen tremendous growth, especially in the last year. Um, we've had over 150 inquiries for service, and we have 38 active families. 21% of those come from Narragansett. And I can tell you we have others that have already been um, reaching out to us for continued service. We held an open house in Warwick on Saturday, and four of the people who actually did register, it wasn't required, were from Narragansett, so there's definitely a need down here. 
And over the last year, because of referrals and admissions, we've been able to hire an, an additional CNA. So whereas there's a lack of CNAs in the community and home care, we have CNAs in our building and we provide showers, ADLs, assistance with feeding, toileting, incontinence, med administration, uh, med um, education. We are in constant communication with families, providers. We are a safety net for folks so that they can keep their loved one at home as long as possible. And you know, sometimes we're even able to prolong and prevent the need for long-term care placement. So um, we've been very effective. We've been in business for 50 years. We celebrated our 50th year. And like I said, we've, we have been working with Town of South Kingstown and Narragansett with your assistance for the last three years. So, and we serve folks from a variety of communities, but we are um, continually seeing a need. Rhode Island is the fifth highest population of folks 85 and older. So to echo what was um, previously said, there, there are a lot of seniors who need help and families are truly struggling. Uh, I can tell you it's a little bit scary when folks come in and you think about the two of them trying to help each other in a shower or, or doing something like that, it, it's quite scary. Um, there are folks that, that really need this help and like I said, unlike a lot of home cares, I have the staff and we're able to grow and we're able to provide that five days a week. So transportation certainly is an issue down here. We do work with MTM, but we are able to use preferred providers, but we do uh, rely on other services as well. It's not, it's not awesome in South County. Uh, I will definitely agree with that. So. Um, but like I said, we've been, we've been doing a, a really good job. We've had um, physical, occupational, and music therapy in our center, uh, various activities, outings, et cetera. So we've also made some um, safety improvements to the building with the help of South Kingstown. And our building is safe, it's secure, it's alarmed, and it's a home-like atmosphere. So I just want to thank you so much for your support and, and request, respectfully request the same funding as last year. Thank you. Any questions for Elizabeth? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. There are a few people that were not here. Jim, I know one is the Chamber of Commerce, and in their notations, it does say that they are looking for an increase due to the calamari contest from last year. Could you elaborate on that a little bit for us? They're not here. That was uh, the content of the letter from from the com from Chamber of Commerce, and that's what Peg had stated to me. Other than that, that's it's just a component of her request. That's all. Okay. Thank you. So they're asking for more. Okay. Great. Thank you. Chris, do you have anything before we move on? No, I do not. I don't know if Patty has anything. I took her limelight by accident. Right. Are you all set? Okay. <laughs> you all good? We don't want you losing your limelight. Okay. All right. Move on to the library. Good evening. Our budget we've put together um, with the idea of the new building and trying to keep in mind um, what we expenses that we're not really sure what's going to happen. So some of our increases are just regarding heating, electricity, just in case we need the money to cover um, those charges because we just don't really know. We're hoping that they're really efficient. Since the old library was so old, that maybe we'll save a lot of money Always. with the new new staff. Um, as far as staffing, we're maintaining um, the level of staffing with just an increase for raises, which we put in for 3% overall, which includes the full and part-time. And then if you notice the overtime line, I wanted to explain what that was. That is basically what we cover for our Sunday hours. Um, we're one of the few libraries open on Sundays, especially in South County. So um, years ago, the board had um, planned to open on Sundays and offered over to us so that we could have staff coverage. It is an important service. Um, many people rely on it for Sundays because that's their only day off. 
Um, we're open 12 to 4 from September all the way through April. When the weather gets nicer, people tend to want to be outside, so we find it's not worth being open that time of year. But definitely from September on to um, April, it's, it's worth it. And again, we use minimal staff part-time um, to help answer questions and fulfill requests. Thank you. Um, the other um, incidentals are things kind of out of our control, health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance. Um, as we move down, our, which is still an old-fashioned term plan, which now is actually Ocean State Libraries, and um, CLAN is our technology. It's a consortium that runs the state's technology. And we, as you saw, some of Dan's licensing costs, because we share through a consortium, our licensing fees are quite low. Um, and so the licenses are included in our membership. It also includes ebooks, which is um, part of our membership's purchases ebooks for the whole state. We use that as. Um, Kind of a cutting off, a starting off point for the membership, but because ebooks are so popular, we do use extra money from our book budget to buy them. So, but that um, money, that the thirty-one thousand, we get quite a bit of bang for our buck for that. We also get like wireless, you know, the wireless internet comes to them, so that we can offer it throughout the whole new big building, and then um, they're also working on moving over the parking lot Wi-Fi, which is very popular. Um, it came out during COVID that we were able to offer it. And now they're trying to, because it's through a grant, then the um, grants are per location. So because we moved, there's a lot of red tape trying to move it to the new building. But we're hoping that works out. If we move down, um, down to licenses and dues. Again, that is just some of our internal licensing, which has to do with our um, self-check machines. Those are our own choice. It's not a consortium requirement. But um, again, during COVID, we offered the self-check as an option for people, and everyone fell in love with it. But it is, again, the licensing is expensive, as Dan says. Um, we currently have two self-checks and we're hoping to add one more. Professional development is just the staff going to um, conventions and things like that. This year we were able to send our reference librarian, Sam, out to Denver for a conference which was on our public catalog so he could learn how to interface with everything and he also presented at the conference, so it was okay. kind of a nice um, thing. OSL is helping to sponsor his costs as well. But we also use that for Rhode Island Library Association supports a lot of you know, our activities and things, so memberships and licensing goes to that. And then we have the usual heating, fuel, sewage, telephone. Um, and just to note, the telephone service, again, we were in the old building. We had the old kind of phones. Now we're back with the real world. And we have the voice over internet. And um, that is a little bit more than what we were paying. And that also includes our hotspots. And I think you're familiar with those. People can check them out. And um, they're very popular still. Um, and then we get to our library books. Um, and again, we did decrease a little bit. Last year we had 105,000 for our books because of the move and the new building. We wanted to really get into the collection, update it, get the books in good condition, fix them, replace them, or repair them as needed. So now we did do that. We did a full inventory. Everything's in order, and now we can kind of step back a little and not purchase as much. Um, I also want to note with the um, book budget, as I mentioned, the e-books 
we do supplement the ebooks through our membership as well as our materials budget. But ebooks is a big um, problem these days with the publishers putting major restrictions <coughs> on libraries. So when we buy one copy of a book, um, let's just say James Patterson, they'll let, only let us use it 26 times. And then we have to buy an additional copy. And as you imagine, the holds are quite long um, on these popular titles. They're very expensive. If you were to buy an ebook yourself, it's not as expensive. But libraries have to pay much higher fees and things. There are legislation um, movements across the country to try to get the publishers to do, be more fair with the libraries. Um, so far, we haven't had any luck. but. Um, we do have a new legislation in the state this this year, so we're hoping that it does some work because it's kind of a, it's hard to sustain this where you're having to buy multiple copies and you know that kind of thing. So, but that does supplement our budget as well with um, e-books. Our equipment line item again, we have like a maintenance that we replace computers when the warranties run out. We replace the printers and all that equipment. So um, that's actually established through OSL. We tr all try to have the same equipment because it's easier for maintenance mm -hmm. and for um, patrons to use it. It's all user friendly for them. So um, that's pretty much the discussion of some of our budget items. Uh, Did you want to add? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add that um, we submitted our budget in December, and then we did get a surprise of the 37000 on the solar uh, that was not in our expenses at the time. So this has been, we have already taken 37000 out of the budget to balance it, because we can't go forward and just ask for more revenues. So, so some of these um, decreases were, we were trying to make it balanced and that's fine I mean but um, I think we're up something like 16,000 in uh, year over year and that's why it becomes important because we, we did have 37,000 more in expenses for this year's budget that weren't initially in when we did the budget in December so yeah we just closed the solar loan just recently. Right, right, yeah. right yeah so that's why it wasn't in there yet and now we have it. There was um, also uh, 20,000 requested. Yes. Yeah. 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 For the, for the I'm sorry. Yeah. So sorry. Um, one of the things that the library um, was it had to kind of drop out of the original building project was the what we call the hearing loop to assist people with hearing aids. It's a system that goes in the floor that people can connect their hearing aids to. Um, in the meantime, we had to drop that out, and it's been a few years, and the technology is changing, and we've learned that the hearing loops um, break easily, and they're not easy. You can't really fix them. You have to just replace the whole thing. So we've looked into um, wireless systems that go in the ceiling, and again, it's assistive technology um, for people that have trouble hearing. And so we've gotten a couple estimates to put that in the um, new building. Um, it won't have to, we won't have to, like one of the hearing loops problem was we'd have to tear up the new floors and stuff. Mm -hmm. But with this, we just put it right in the ceiling and it's um, much more efficient. Um, so we've we used the prices off of the MPA for the state. Um, that's where we've gotten some of the prices. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the council at all? Christine? No. Not yet? Not yet. <laughs> I guess. They I just, just increased I, the funding. I just, um, just by, it, it's just by 16,000, almost 17,000. Just so you're aware, because um, that's the maintenance of effort that would be increased. I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. I do have a couple of comments. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd just like to say that I love the new library, and I have been to the new library, I think, um, at least three Sundays. <laughs> so I do like it being open, and I love the, um, the program that is, that, that is produced through uh, 
I guess it's sort of like a, co a coalition of, of uh, wonderful nonprofits in the area, the South County Museum, the uh, Nara River Association, and um, my personal favorite, Kanaji Farms. So um, I, I really think that that's a, that's a great thing. Um, with the, uh, I, I have no problem. I think the budget makes a lot of sense. I think it's, um, it's uh, concise and pretty, and pretty conservative. Um, I would like to say that the capital um, expense is really interesting. I, I think if I understand this uh, technology, it's the kind of technology they have available in theaters and, and movie theaters for, for it's assistive for, he, for the hearing. Yes. And I know people, um, so far I don't have to use it, but <laughs> could be coming any day now. And uh, I do know a lot of people who find it incredibly helpful um, when they have to be able to hear something that just has reverberations, et cetera. So I think it would be a really good idea to add that. Um, we do have a lot of older people who utilize that library, and I'm sure um, would be would be really grateful, you know, to be able to hear even better. So it's I think funny that's a great you idea. mentioned the speaker series that we had the past few months, yeah. and every speaker series we had complaints that they but, couldn't <laughs> hear, right? Because we right. just don't have the assistive technology. That well, we that see. is a group that I think the average age is about 75. Yes. So. <laughs> um, so I'm a youngster there, so it's kind of pleasant. But yeah, I think I think that's a great idea. Councilor Ferrandi, I I don't have anything for the library. I think it's good. It's a nice working library, and you know everybody's looking forward to using it as much as they can. Um, this is more of a technical question. I mean, I'm looking over, but can you just and uh, Jim, you maybe will explain this, or, or Christine, you may be able to. Um, when I'm looking at all the columns, you know, I see the uh, 2000 original and the revised which a lot of times it's the same. Actual is what's spent at this time. The, the manager's budget, is that what all the department heads have asked for for this year? You yeah. know, what, what, how does that, who, who sets this, this last column as far as Town deductions? Manager. So they, they've submitted a budget and- He so, slashed. Yeah. Yes. The final uh, town manager's recommended budget to the council is when Myself and Christine meet with senior management and go through the list, uh, right, and yeah. we go back and forth with the department heads and try to prioritize things, save some money. Sometimes we find that we spend some money. Yeah. Maybe something else pops up. Yep. Uh, the library budget consistently, I forward to the council for consideration. Is there a library appoint, uh, the library uh, trustees or a town council appointed body? Uh, so the, the budget is forwarded to you as it's submitted. Yeah, that's fine. And then that last one is just what you and Christine have gone through to adjust. There's already adjustments been made in whatever the department head has given right. you. Or not. Okay. If that's yes. correct. Yeah, correct. Okay, thank you. So how many Eclipse glasses did you give out yesterday, the day before? 750 pairs. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. wow. Very good. We got lucky. I only ordered 500, but some of them came damaged <clears throat> in the earpiece, but of course the rest worked. So we gave out all the damaged ones and the ones that were Thank you. Right. And that was the number one question, let me tell you. I bet, I bet. Thank it's, you. It's if cool. I could make one Please. more comment, that, that 20,000, just so everybody's uh, clear on it, it's not included in the regular allocation. Right. It's kind of like I did with the 108 with the child oh, okay. court. It's gonna be outside, I'm gonna put it in your building fund. So it doesn't become maintenance of effort. Okay. Right. It's, right, right, it's a right, special right. one. That's yeah. Yes, yeah, so that makes sense. So Got that it. would be outside of their budget. Okay. Additional. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Town manager. <coughs> There's not a lot of excitement in this one. Um, the only the major change was through the combination. <laughs> of the HR position with the executive assistance position. Um, but the percentage of drop on the manager's budget is not as high as the one from HR, but the numbers are the same. They're roughly right around the same, about $40,000 from both. But the manager's budget is three times that other one. And as we go forward, after this uh, period of time of over a year in the position, I will then be consolidating the two budget lines so that we can eliminate one and combine it uh, to the other. And the person currently holding the position, Ms. Rosa, she's been with the town like 28 years, and we have budgeted for a salary adjustment uh, 
at the time of the one year in service, sticking with the administrative compensation schedule that is approved by the town council. We're kind of evaluating that position as far as how much time is spent in each role, just to get an idea of uh, how we are going to do it going forward. And that's really the only change in the town manager's budget. Okay. Any questions for Jim? I actually don't have a question for Jim. I have one for Christine that's not really related to town manager. I just I forgot to ask, um, in terms of the, um, the medical co costs, you know, de dental and, and um, medical, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Uh, what, do you have any idea? I know you probably haven't gotten the, the real dollars did. yet. You did? I just got it. Oh, recently. wow, cool. Yes. So we so budgeted 8%. The yeah. health came in at a 5.66% increase, and dental came in at a 0.67% increase. So, you know, dental's not a lot of money, but yeah. it, it, there'll be some savings there. In the next version, after we go through all this, um, there'll be some savings Excellent. in the medical. It's my favorite question. So. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> okay. So will you be presenting the, the solicitor as well, Jim? Okay, thank you. The increase in the uh, solicitors is simply because there's been quite a bit of litigation, and we recommend increasing it uh, from the 200 to 230,000 at this juncture. And I think the billing supports it. Yep. Any do questions we, from the council? Yeah, do we know what we actually, because I haven't had a chance to look at the audited <laughs> document yet, uh, what we, what our actual number was for 2023? Was it, is it the one that's in here? For the solicitor, for the solicitor yeah. Okay. So, and, and our actual 2024 numbers are through February, is that right? Uh, through March oh, they are through March? 26th. Oh, okay, so that's almost <laughs> the whole month. So, I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to, unless some huge amount of money is going to come up in the next three months, the next two and a half months, um, that we're going to hit 200000 So uh, is there really a reason to, to go to 230? I mean, do we expect something very different from what we have this year? I'm just curious. I don't think so. I think we're going to continue to increase it because there'll be some litigation that, that, that will, be, will have to be farmed out and it either comes from the council's budget for professional services or the solicitor himself because this obviously isn't his you know, flat salary. This so is, this is not salary, this is correct. includes external. Why don't we just put that in the town council's budget? Is there some, I mean, is there some reason why we do it this way, we split it? I think it's just been historically done that way. There is a there is a little bit of money in the in the in the, in the, council. in the council's yeah, budget for that. something that you <clears throat> would uh, want. I'm trying to think of what was a few years back. You had a special project. I don't know if anybody remembers it. Parking study was one. It, yeah, there's been some things that you wanted to, like that were over and above, and I don't think the solic it wasn't so the solicitor that everything. was used. It was somebody else. So this would be. This should be everything unless the town council came up with some specific request. Some outside thing, maybe, a, you know, if yes. okay. there's HR stuff or pension stuff, it wouldn't, you know, that might be outside, right? And I can provide the council uh, before the first reading uh, an updated um, accounting okay. of, of what has been paid out. Okay. Like I've done in the past with the, the Excel spreadsheet. I'll just send yep. another one to you before the first reading. Yep. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Chief Corrigan. Good evening. Good evening. We can start with Capital. Sure. Okay. We got a Capital Police. Police. Uh, <clears throat> So the first item you see is our vehicle replacement. So that amount is for two marked cruisers and the upfitting uh, lights, sirens, um, prisoner cage, etc. Uh, the second item is the MDTs, which are mobile data terminals. These are the computers that are in, um, inside of the cruisers, and that uh, amount pays for one. We have uh, one on our inventory that will take care of the other. 
second vehicle. Third item is for uh, body armor replacement. We have um, 11 vests that are, that are expiring uh, coming up. Um, so that is about 50% of the cost. We have a grant taking care of the other half. The uh, fourth item, the animal control vehicle, we push that to next year. So we've got a car that's been running, so we're going to stick with that. Uh, fifth item is uh, radios. That will purchase uh, two radios, and that will get us up to a uh, full amount for our officers. So that, that item will disappear next year. The sixth item is for uh, tasers. That's the Model 10. That will purchase seven of those over uh, five years, and that's the first year payment right there. Uh, item seven for um, equipment, I believe that is the speed uh, equipment. So the, uh, you probably noticed the radar shields that we have in front of the beach on Kingstown Road and on South Pier Road. It's been an excellent uh, resource for us. We want to expand that, get a few more of those. Um, that was originally an ARPA. Uh, request something that came out of the pandemic was a lot of uh, speed speeding complaints in town. So, so will they be on Point Judith Road, the new ones? That's one. <laughs> I, that actually is one of the locations that we have identified. Good. Glad to hear it. Speedway. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I call it the old barn. So the uh, next item would be the uh, firearms training and response. Uh, that is the, to replace um, some old patrol rifles that we have. Our plan is not to trade in the existing ones. We will destroy those and just purchase three new ones. Item number nine is uh, the body cameras. Uh, that is being covered under a grant. We, don't, we won't need that until uh, 2028. Uh, number 10, uh, this also was a, uh, an initial request for opera funds for Riot Gear. Uh, there was a lot of social unrest in 2020. And um, so I've, I've kept that item on there, uh, not knowing what the future will hold. So I would say if there's a, a need for a cut, that would be a, a possibility. But there is concern for what the, uh, the election season is going to be like, and what kind of um, disturbances there may be. Uh, number 11 was uh, for a Harbor Master vehicle. Um, we, uh, after a discussion, decided we we're going to handle that through fleet replacement in the, in the future. And the final, final item is the HVAC replacement. And I did some research on this. In the past six years, we've, we have spent repairs as much as for buying a new one would cost. Mm -hmm. So it continually breaks down. It's a 2011 model. Okay. Okay. Any questions on the uh, capital before I go to operations? Any questions at all from council? Jim, as the commissioner of public safety, did you want to add anything to the first portion? I think it's a good item to keep in there. We never know. And he's, uh, we've gone over this budget extensively along with the, with the capital, and there were some significant cuts made in that as well. And these were left in there. Thank you. So for operations, the first budget is going to be dispatch. That's all payroll, which is covered under. Council 94, so if you have any questions, I'll move on. Uh, the next budget is for our uh, civilian staff, non-officers. Non uh, this this uh, line covers our, um, some full-time uh, clerk staff, uh, part-time, such as uh, maintenance and public records. Uh, I'll call your attention to uh, one increase, which is um, for a project for my to expand my CSO program, community service officers. The um, ordinance that you passed last summer to expand the parking restrictions, that's gonna be about 500 parking spaces. So we're gonna need additional CSOs to cover that. Um, we've advertised, we've got an excellent response. We've got 53 applications. Wow. So I think we're gonna be able to come up with, with one of my requests is for 23 CSOs. That's an additional five from where we uh, usually staff. And that'll allow us to take care of those additional roads that you're looking for. <clears throat> other than that, um, there's other administrative lines here. If you don't have any questions, I, I'll move on to patrol. Any questions? <coughs> so this is patrol staffing. Uh, there's no 
no changes here. This is all handled under the IBPO uh, CBA. It's the same staffing as last year. That's 43 officers that accounts for uh, a school resource officer in, in each school, the full-time housing officer. I'll remind you that the school resource officer in the elementary school, half of that is paid for by the school department and half of the middle school. So essentially one of our three SROs is paid for by the school department. Any questions on patrol? Any questions? Okay. So general investigations is the next line. Uh, there's been no changes here. This, this funds three detectives, uh, the detective lieutenant and the detective uh, sergeant, um, same as last year. Any questions with investigations? Any questions? Good. Right, moving on, uh, the Amp patrol officer position. Uh, this funds the Amp patrol officer in a part-time position, which is currently vacant that we're advertising for. Otherwise, there's no uh, changes to uh, that budget. I just question have a question on that. That's, sure. Has, has, has that been vacant for a while now? The part-time position has been vacant for uh, a few months. And yes, the full-time position is filled. That's filled, okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yep. And the last budget is for the Hubbard Master. Um, there hasn't been any changes to this budget. This is the, the seasonal uh, full-time Hubbard Master. Uh, Kevin Connors, everybody familiar with, does an excellent job for us. Uh, no other change to that budget. That's everything I have. Any other questions for the chief? Any more comments from the town manager? I, just have, I have no. one question on the on the, the body cameras now. Yes. Those were fairly new, right? So didn't we? Didn't you just get them like within the last year or two? Yes, no, we had a, a full year. We're in our second year right now. Right it's now. A, a five year grant that's been paying for it, and, which and we're trying to get extended. We're working on that. And how many do the officers have now? Is it, does everyone on the on the ship? All the, the front line is all covered. Front line officers and front line um, and the sergeants. So we have thirty three. Okay, and they, and they're not they're not they activate it on their own, correct? Depending on the type of the call. It depends. We have a sensor for the firearm. If they take the firearm out, that'll activate. Um, there, there are sensors uh, that interface with our record management system. So for certain calls for service, it'll automatically activate. Okay, yeah. But otherwise, it's the officer does it themselves. Yeah. And, uh, okay. We've had excellent compliance with that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's been very smooth. Jim, do you have anything to add? No, I'm just uh, happy with the services that it provides to the community, and I support it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, Chief Partington. That's right. Okay, uh, thank you. This, this year I brought in uh, our administrative captain, Captain Conroy, just so he can get a little flavor of, of what's going on throughout this whole budget pl planning process and approval process. So I've asked him to join us uh, this, this evening. He has uh, joined us throughout the whole uh, planning process as well. Um, I know what I gave you is just, uh, it's a little busy, but uh, if you are interested in the whole uh, electronic version, I'd be happy to send it along to you. Um, I do take this opportunity, um, as you know in the past, just to uh, discuss a little bit about some of the things that the fire department has done over the, over the previous year. Um, it's a chance for me to highlight the work that they do, 
uh, give them a little recognition and um, sh you know show the activities that that we do uh, get involved with o over the years um, all of which are on that on that sheet right now um, so as as we stand right now you know we're just not uh, involved with uh, um, fighting fires there's a whole bunch of other activities that we pursue the call volume overall has has increased um, it continues to, to increase our activities continue to increase year to year um, Right now, uh, as of 2023, you know, for call activities, these are service calls. These are, you know, activities that we do um, besides just the, the reporting ones that um, have to go to the national uh, reporting system. So these, these, are, these are a lot of service calls and activities that are done behind the scenes. Um, th uh, over th about 3,778 calls for service uh, of the year 2023. Uh, that's inclusive of everything that we do. Um, and if you look at that kind of retrospectively, uh, uh, rec going back to 1993, and um, it's really been a 123% increase over the past 30 um, plus years um, from what I've seen uh, year, year to year. Um, and I did include this in kind of a very detailed um, report that I, I sent to the town manager, and I'm sure he has uh, shared it with, with all of you. Um, so this was just information I was passing along to you. Um, if you look at the stat sheet that I gave you, a lot of the work that we do is, is really centered around um, EMS. It's about two thirds of our call volume is, is EMS activities. Um, and then, and then an interesting stat is about 25% of the time that we're experiencing a call, there's another call coming in. Um, so we, we, we call them concurrent calls or, or simultaneous type of calls. Um, it's not necessarily the, the, the volume that we do, it's, it's always been the frequency that, that of the calls that, that come in. Um, and a lot of times, 25% of the time, um, when we're dealing with one, there's another one that is coming in uh, for us to deal with. Um, so all of this we, we've kept in mind, and as you look through these stats, we've kept in mind as I um, uh, put together this budget transmittal and request to the town manager uh, for this 24-25 uh, year. Um, and all of that was um, taken into consideration when I, when I did that. So uh, that's a little bit of uh, the history. Um, some, of the, some of the things that will be addressed are, are the continuation of the current staffing levels was, was a request that I had to the town manager uh, and to the finance director to, to consider. Um, the SAFER grant that you know uh, was a, um, a, a three-year performance period grant that paid wages and salaries for three years. Um, it, it started in uh, 2022, January, and will end uh, January of 25. So there's a gap period in wages and benefits for those additional eight that um, we has been uh, put into the, the budget uh, for this 24, 25 year. Um, that was the ask. Uh, so when you look at the wages and benefits increases in that category from the operating, uh, that takes that into consideration uh, for, for this next coming, coming year. Um, all right, so, uh, I don't know if there's any questions on any of the activities that we do. I can just jump right into the uh, to the operating then and go through that. Does the council have any questions for the chief? Please go ahead. All right. Oh, thought I forgot my packet there, Miss Finance Lee. <laughs> All right, so for the operating, uh, if you look at the, uh, the top, top account there, where we start with uh, uh, 50101 full-time wages and right down to account level, account item uh, 50127, that's essentially all of the wages and benefits um, that um, uh, we worked out and uh, at the recommendation um, of the finance director and town manager, so all of those, um, wages were increased according to their uh, recommendations, taking into account all the other increases and things that are gonna go on. 
Um, again, it, it includes the, that five-month gap for the, for the safer grant for those additional firefighters to cover them through that 24-25 period. So then the next, the next uh, increase, and just, and just um, stop me if there's any questions uh, uh, as we go down, the, down it. Um, the other increase. Which? Is the other plan? So the, after they're funded? Well, well I, I, my, my plan is to, uh, to keep them to, uh, and maintain yeah, their yeah. staffing levels. That's always been my, my plan. Okay. Um, I did put in. Um, that uh, recommendation in my, my last budget transmittal uh, to the town manager and finance director for consideration going forward. Um, but if you ask me, yeah, the, the, my plan is to, to keep the staffing levels going forward. Um, and I outlined the reasons why within that, that, that um, budget transmittal to the town manager and uh, the finance director. And, and to be clear, as the chief said, they are budgeted in there, so. Uh, for one of the major reasons we haven't still budgeted in there is because there's no there's no definitive answer what's going to happen with them. We're going into arbitration, and also not to include them in it. I, I think it indicates uh, when you're in the middle of bargaining for something, going to arbitration, it's best to prepare for whatever the outcome is and have it budgeted if we're going to maintain them instead of searching for it later. I just have one, one, one question along, along those lines. I know when the grant was given out, there was talk of, you know, to, to, to get firefighters ready if someone was wanted to retire or anything. And, you know, I, it, it's up to the firefighter, I guess, when he wants to retire. But, I mean, have we had any retirement since, the, since then, or do you foresee any possibilities? Uh, well, under the terms of the SAFER grant, we were required to keep uh, those additional firefighters. So... Um, you know, if there were 40 line firefighters, we were required to keep the 40. So even though if one retired, we were still we still had to replace them. Um, but after after the performance period come January of 2025, oh, yeah. um, you know, the, the town is free to do whatever they choose to. You know, still keep the staffing levels up, um, and and this this 24-25 budget year asks to do that and asks for the funding to do such. Um, but it comes down to the town to determine what they want to do, where, where it's based mm -hmm. upon, you know, what the current minimum staffing requirements are within the CBA yeah. and so forth. So, I, did, I, did I answer? Your yeah, question? no, I There's understand. There's also a I mean, money object in this too. What's that? So you know, there's got to be money for it too for next year in 2026. No, I realize that. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, but I'm just you know. In, just trying to get an idea. That I, it, I'm not saying it wasn't part of the program where someone had to retire, but you know what I mean. It's not that common that you'd hire eight firemen all one mm -hmm. shot, and then you know maybe you keep them on, maybe you don't. But I mean, I know one of the questions was, and they actually become at this point they've become a full fledged firefighter, correct? You know, with other licenses and all, um, to either stay or go to another department or whatever they would. Yeah, we we, we would. Uh, you know, the intent is to re retain them. Right, right. You know, I understand um, that. Come Come February of 25, um, you know, we're required to keep the staffing level right. well, in line with what the current CBA agreement is, you know. Um, but other than that, above above that, the town is not you know required in which to keep them. But um, we 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 do we are anticipating the potential of some retirements, so yeah. we would already have those firefighters to be able to help fill those gaps. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, so just just moving down, anything else that jumps out at you? Um, there is a um, an increase ask in line uh, item uh, account fifty two zero one, which is professional services. Um, that's regarding um, an, an increase associated with um, firefighter medical evaluations um, that we are looking to uh, move forward with. In that category, um, right? Any uh, and then the others, the others down towards the end are are basically increases in anticipated operating costs, um, supplies for EMS supplies, um, 
uh, gas increases, utility increases um, that are expected um, with that. Um, mo moving on to the, to the next page, uh, again, anticipated increases associated with um, those areas are uh, rate increases to water, sewer, utilities, um, um, and things like that. Um, the maintenance service contracts is a, is a large is a large item that's um, in the equipment repair line item, which is five zero five zero six. Um, if you look out across that line item, um, we're, we went contract by contract, um, particularly on our maintenance or service contracts, to in, try and anticipate what the increase uh, in those service contracts would be. Um, and that's reflective in that increase there in that line item. Um, so that's the uh, general fire account. Uh, I don't know if there's anything, any questions related to general fire account. Any questions at all from the council? No. Press on ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, moving on, uh, the next is the uh, fire non-firefighter. Uh, I only have one non-firefighter position in the department, and uh, um, that is our administrative assistant, uh, Judy. Uh, and we intend to keep her, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Um, so that's any questions there? Any questions? Got to keep Judy. Yep. Um, so the next uh, moving on is Gen, uh, Fire <coughs> EMA. And um, that's actually been a, a slight reduction in, the, in that um, category. So um, we are expecting a um, increase. We, well, we did get an increase in our EMPG grant funding, um, which helps to support uh, part-time salary and wages. Um, uh, they went up to uh, a total of, well, the total grant is $25,000 that we were a recipient of, but uh, there's 50% um, match on our requirements. So those wages, uh, those part-time wages in that category help to um, uh, take care of that 50% match requirement. So we actually went down a little bit from previous because of the increase in the, uh, in the grant funding from the support. So we saved just a little bit there. Uh, and then uh, the next one is general fire prevention. Um, and again, that's the uh, fire marshals uh, division, fire prevention division. Uh, and there's no changes in, in that. That's um, still level, level funded. Any questions? Does that, Does that include inspections or is that, no, or is that what that is? I'm, I'm chagrined to say I'm not exactly sure what that is. Well, well, part of his duties include um, ongoing inspections, plan reviews, um, so, things like that. But so these particular accounts fund, help to fund his operating um, supplies, his equipment um, that's needed to, for both his, his division as fire marshal as also um, helping to support the fire alarm um, division, so all the okay. equipment and maintenance that are involved with that. But the inspections are funded by the person receiving the inspection. They have to pay for them. Um, they have to pay for them, and then that goes back to, to the town. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's the smoke CO. Love the smoke and yeah. COs. Yeah. yeah, it's not directed specifically you know, right. to, to, to this fire marshal. It goes, goes back to the general fund. General fund. Okay. Chris. So are there any questions on the, um, the operating at all, on any of those nope. categories? Any questions? No. Capital. Capital, okay, yeah. sure. Uh, <clears throat> I really have seven, seven projects listed here. So project, project number one uh, is regarding the uh, radio uh, 
project or sinking fund as a sinking fund as it's referred to. Um, we're not looking to uh, fund that this year, 24-25, but I did just still want to bring it up because um, uh, this this is this goes back to the the 2021 AFG award that we received for to purchase all new radios, all new portables, mobile radios. It was a huge grant. I forget the exact dollar amount. 320, Captain Conroy's been on that implementation <laughs> project and coordin coordin helping to coordinate that. Um, so that took care of our, our needs for what we anticipate for at least a couple of years or probably beyond that um, mm -hmm. as far as the replacement of a lot of those radios because they were extremely expensive. So we have a lot of spares and the spares will be shared throughout the town um, uh, and you know through, through the different departments to help uh, supplement their radio requirements and needs. So that was a huge grant. Um, it provided us uh, um, the ability to plug a big needed gap uh, and and purchase a lot of radios. So we cut we cut that we cut that request and pulled pulled that one back. Uh, the vehicle replacement program is the next project. Uh, I don't know. Were there any questions on, on that first one? No. Any questions? No. The vehicle replacement program is is the next one. Uh, and uh, this was originally looking to uh, replace a fire pumper. Uh, and the fire pumper we was looking to replace is, is our oldest fairly in the fleet. It's a, it's a 2005 pumper, it's, it's coming up on 25 years old. Um, it serves as our um, active reserve piece. Uh, we looked, the, the replacement program we have in place, we looked to get at least 20 years out of the vehicle. Uh, we're coming up on 25 years with this vehicle. Um, so uh, unfortunately, they're very expensive to replace. Uh, they keep going up. Uh, Captain Conroy shared with me the last kind of stat. Uh, a cost of a fire apparatus has had over a 100% increase over the past three to five years. And actually, it's, you know, we, what we bought, uh, the last pumper we bought, which was our, our engine three, it replaced our north end pumper. Uh, that came in when? Last? Took a while. So since then, uh, it, it's, it'll cost you another $100,000 to, to replace that truck. And that was 650000 about which we paid for that. Um, so they're, they're incredibly costly. Um, so um, looking at that project, it would have been a, a, an ask of 750000 alone just to replace that pumper. Um, it, it, it got cut. It got reduced to um, half of that. And we're looking to stretch that out over a two-year two-year project to replace that pumper. So the ask now is for half of it, what, what's anticipated as of now to be half half of it um, at 3, 375 um, to fund that project. Um, we, 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 again, we try to get the 20 years out of the vehicle. Um, we only have one reserve vehicle and this is the one, uh, it's the oldest in our fleet. So when a pumper, uh, or one of our fire trucks goes out of service, for any length of time, this backfills that pumper and, and functions as a primary um, piece. Uh, and it does it fairly frequently because um, good quality preventative maintenance that DPW does, trucks go out of service, things break, so we have to you know, backfill that pumper with, with the active reserve. And we only have one of them. Uh, if another one goes down, we borrow uh, from another community. Uh, and we've had to do that as well. So, um, uh, but we had to make a decision. We, we, we peeled that back. So it, again, we're looking at a two year uh, program for that. Um, any questions for that? No. Oh. All right. Uh, the, next, the next project I had on the hit list here is um, equipment replacement project. Um, this is for very costly EMS equipment. Um, again, that has gone up quite a bit as well. Uh, we are in the need of replacing uh, cardiac defibrillator monitors, CPR compression systems, stretchers, and other uh, expensive medical equipment. Um, right now, uh, we have replaced a CPR compression board, which is about $15,000 for one of them. Um, we're looking to replace a steer chair stretcher, uh, which is about $5,000 a piece. Uh, we need to replace three of them. Uh, then a cardiac monitor, those big fancy 
cardiac monitors that you see that are 12 lead EKG, they do everything to go make you a cup of coffee. Uh, those are um, anywhere from 45 to $50,000, you know, full with everything on them uh, to replace one of them. Um, so uh, this project is uh, looking to replace those pieces of e needed equipment um, as needed. So that's where that 45 is at for this coming fiscal year. Anything else? Any questions on that project? Nope. Uh, the next project I had on here, and I could talk at length on this one, but uh, I'll probably get the hook. Uh, this is the, uh, the building fire uh, station two renovation project. Um, thank you, by the way, for originally funding this um, through OPA funding. Uh, it was 1.1 million originally, Chris, I think, that we, we appropriated for this project. Um, but we, we, we realized that it wasn't going to fund the entire project. It was for phase one. Uh, take it, love it, and we were looking to uh, move that project forward. Um, we are getting close to, we were getting close to um, bidding that project out. Uh, all the construction documents were done. Um, and we we're going to go out for RFP uh, when we um, uh, were awarded the public safety infrastructure grant for another almost nine, uh, um, one million dollars. Um, so we're very happy on that. So that we believe will complete uh, all phases of the project, phase two and three, uh, complete all the renovations that we think will be needed for that project. Um, so um, we pull back any, any asks for that 24, 25 year um, for any of that, th th that project for that to fund that. Um, however, down the road, you know, there are other buildings. Um, remember, there's, there's three fire stations, um, two outline fire stations. The other, the other north end fire station will need to be considered for, for renovations as well down the line. But, uh, but for 24, 25, there's no ask for, for, for that year, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Well. And congratulations again, and thank you. Yes. Any questions regarding that? Mm -hmm. All the renovations have all been completed in there yet, or no? No, 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 no started, we're, gonna, right? we're expected yeah. to go out to bid um, <laughs> no, going on. very, very soon. Okay. Um, the discussion we're having is to whether to go out to bid for the entire project, phase phase one, two, and three. Uh, wait, you know, till we get the yeah. construction, to get the documents completed on phase two and three. Or, or bid it out as, as, as we have it now, and then have an addendum added to um, the RFP for um, phase two and three additionally being based upon the, you know, the additional funding that we received. So we're, we're having those internal discussions now. Okay, okay. number five. Yep, num number, number five. Um, that is our town-wide AED. Um, uh, program. It's the, the, the maintenance of that program. Uh, we had uh, purchased, well, lease, lease purchased, I guess you could say leased, uh, 40 brand new AED units that have um, uh, been dispersed throughout the community. We have a few left that we need to uh, disperse. So this is an ongoing maintenance to uh, support that program. Um, back in uh, this year, 23-24, we signed a five-year um, rate lock lease agreement on all those AEDs. It's a terrific program. Uh, I've been involved in the integration and implementation of it. Um, so this is to help fund that lease program going, going forward for the next five years at least. Any questions? It's a great program. On to number six. Uh, the next, next one is um, uh, the fire alarm re receiving and in, in, in dispatch center. This is a capital project to um, provide the infrastructure and equipment and upgrades necessary to support and monitor, um, support, monitor, and maintain the town's municipal fire alarm receiving system. So um, we are transferring over to the radio box technology from the overhead cabling system. Um, uh, but there is an ongoing need to upgrade some of the um, digitizers and, and computers and, and equipment centered around that project um, within dispatch. So this will go, go towards helping to um, fund those needs uh, within the dispatch center primarily. Any questions on this? No. Nope. Number seven. 
the next next project, and uh, I believe it's, it's the last one, it um, has to do with the um, fire suppression equipment replacement program. Uh, it's an 18,500 ask, and um, this is centered towards <coughs> replacement of uh, firefighter PPE equipment, um, the SCBA or the, the, the air apparatus that we wear, uh, particularly the bottles need to be replaced, um, along with our mobile data terminals within our vehicles um, and any other fire-related equipment to help support the fire, fire suppression division. Um, this year, uh, we had focused primarily on the replacement of our turnout gear. Um, we had several sets of gear that were um, approaching their expiration date, uh, which is, uh, by NFPA standards, 10 years. Correct, Captain? Correct, Correct. 10 years. Uh, and that's just not the, the coat and the pants, which are very expensive. I believe a set costs, what was our last, about 4000 somewhere, four, four to four. About, I think it's almost close to four thousand, uh, five thousand dollars now. Um, but it's also the 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 helmet, excuse me, the the helmets, the boots, the gloves, and the um, protective, um, uh, the Poison. protective hoods that we wear as well, and all that, all those things. So we put in boots, yeah, and we placed we placed all of those. So that th this year we focused on that. Um, uh, we're going to be focusing on. Um, uh, the same, but uh, really looking at the SCBA bottles that need to be replaced because uh, we have many that are coming out of um, expiration and end of life and need to be replaced. Um, so that program is primarily for those for those items uh, right there. And the ask this year is 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 eighteen five. Um, it's only going to get um, a little bit more expensive um, down the line with some of the other years coming up. Are there any questions for the chief or for Captain Conroy? Thank you. Okay. No Thank you, Jess. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, anything to add before we ask for a motion to adjourn? I'll, I'll thank all the staff that uh, worked together to get these budgets presented to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, especially. Is there a motion to adjourn? Actually, we do. So we'll. You just want to I'm sorry, I had asked ahead of time and I thought you had something.